Well, just last week, FBI Director Christopher Wray called China the biggest long-term threat to the U.S. There are open espionage investigations involving China, now get this, in all 50 states, in high-tech, agriculture, and academia. With over a million international students in the U.S., many worry that intellectual property developed here is being stolen by some of those students and taken back to their countries. We went to Duke University to investigate a case where a professor who invented special invisibility technology, learned his research, walked out the door with one of his Chinese grad students. That student, now a tech billionaire, agreed to talk to us. So we begin in China. Meet the man dubbed China's Elon Musk, Rupan Lu. Like Musk, he's working on sending people into space and has already sent them flying. He's the man behind jet-powered surfboards. At 35, he's a multi-billionaire. The latest numbers coming out say that you are worth $2.7 billion. Is it? <laughs> True? Well, I didn't come by that. <laughs> he specializes, he tells me, in disruptive technology. We met him recently at his company's headquarters in China. Actually, we call ourselves a future studio. Future studio. Yeah, a lot of uh, inspiration really comes from the, the scientific fiction movie. But science fiction hasn't been his only inspiration. Rupan Liu owes much of his success to this American scientist. Oh, this Actually, is how you do it. This is how we do it. Dr. David Smith, considered one of the world's experts on something called metamaterials. Lou came here to Duke University to study in Dr. Smith's lab. Some believe he was on a mission from the Chinese government. And did you know about Dr. Smith, David Smith, before you before? went? Before? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. He's very famous before. Famous for inventing something that captured the attention of late night comedians and even made it onto Jeopardy. How innovative for 200, please. Duke University has developed a prototype for a cloak that grants this power just like Harry Potter's. The truth is, Dr. Smith's invisibility cloak is not exactly like Harry Potter's. My body's gone! But it is groundbreaking enough for the U.S. military to have invested millions in his basic research. Lou enrolled at Duke in 2006. Uh, very smart, yes. Uh, very, very directed, though. Very directed, very likable. A sweet kid, basically. Uh, almost, uh, you'd almost describe him as bumbling a little bit. Though he was extremely focused when it came to getting his colleagues back in China involved. Did you start to get a little bit alarmed? The real metric is productivity. And for a time, he was being very productive, more productive than most graduate students. Liu talked Dr. Smith into bringing his old colleagues from China into his lab. And they took pictures of the lab. They did take pictures of the lab. And then what did they do? We have a certain apparatus uh, that uh, allows us to uh, measure the cloak. They came in and, and took pictures and measurements of all the equipment that was used to fabricate that and actually sent that back to China is what I found. And one was built in, in uh, uh, Rupang's old lab. Is that ethical? Uh, it sounds like theft to me. I don't know. It sounds like theft. If we were a company, you might think so. Frank Figluzzi, the former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI, says lots of valuable research is allowed to walk right out the door into the labs of America's adversaries. Figluzzi's unit opened a case on Lou in 2010. You've worked in counterintelligence for a long time. What does your gut tell you? Was he placed at Duke? by the Chinese government. This was more than just a grad student taking something that didn't belong to him. Did they place him there with that intention? I don't think we'll ever know. Was he handled, approached, compromised, recruited, subsidized when he took it back to China? My theory says yes. Rupan Liu strongly denies any wrongdoing. There are sources at the FBI who believe that the Chinese government sent you to Duke in order to learn about <laughs> materials from Dr. Smith and then bring all that back here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. Uh, it's far away from the truth. The FBI closed their case on Liu a few years ago, citing a shortage of evidence, much like Dr. Smith. I didn't have any evidence, uh, and everything that he did was explained away. 
But after Lou graduated, an email emerged, appearing to be from Lou to a colleague in China, which Dr. Smith says shows that from the time he arrived at Duke, Lou had been plotting secretly to take technology developed in the Duke lab and commercialize it back in China. If you would received that email or seen it, before he would gotten his PhD, would you have tried to stop him from getting a degree from Duke? Absolutely. He wouldn't have a degree from Duke. But he does, and he went home to China with his Duke PhD and launched his tech company, now valued at $6 billion, the first company the current Chinese president visited after his election. When we visited there in the lobby of Liu's company, an advanced version of Dr. Smith's invisibility cloak is proudly displayed. So Rupan Liu just recently became a member of China's National People's Congress. He told me what he's really excited about these days is driverless roads where the road drives your car for you. Now, trust me, that's complicated. <laughs> Finally, Dan Golden in his compelling book, Spy Schools, was the first to report on Dr. Smith and Dr. Liu. And he tells us that a small but significant percentage of the million foreign students in the U.S. are indeed here mm. to siphon off research or recruit informants and gather intelligence. And I should tell you, the the FBI told us that the Chinese have a shopping list of stuff they want and that this research at Duke was on the list. How do you study technology in a university yeah. and take it with you? Where's yeah. the line? Well, it's really complicated because, you know, we said to universities, hey, why not just crack down here? They say the Chinese and other foreign students are some of their best grad students. They don't want to lose them. They pull, pay full fare for the most mm -hmm. part. You know, they, they pay the full check. And they say, look, many foreign universities are now opening branches in China. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very complicated. That's part of academics yeah. where you're supposed yeah. to learn and grow and take a but theory. Yeah. Yeah. Professor said it would have been theft if it were a company. Right. Yeah. The university, yeah. some of those companies. But, you know, basic research is open. Mm -hmm. All right, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.